All right, welcome back. Welcome back. This will be week three of our Q&A. Hope everybody had a good weekend and looking forward to a good, prosperous, prosperous week. Uh, we've got about five questions we'll be going through tonight. So uh, sit back. Uh, if you got any questions of your own, uh, you know, put them in the comments or inbox me like everybody else do, and I'll get to it on a weekly basis as long as I got the questions coming in. So uh, getting started this week, we got five questions. Uh, the first question I got was, uh, do I prefer natural tails or dark tails? Me, uh, actually up until a few months ago, I was all about uh, dark tails. I didn't like the tails, but lately it just uh, has grown on me. I had one, uh, my first female I had imported uh, back in, I think, around October September, October, she, of course, she had a tail when she got here, and it just growed on me ever since, so uh, I've been a fan of the tail lately, or either docked. I got a male that's uh, 15 months old. His tail been docked, but I, I kind of like them either way. Uh, I like both. I like the tail, and I like them docked, so I don't, I don't really have a preference. I think they look good both ways. I mean, everybody don't agree to that, but uh, like I said before, before I got my imported female, I was all about the dark tails, so uh, now that I got two females that have tails and gonna have a few more coming in, you know, I, I seem to like it the more I see it. So uh, I don't have a preference. I like the tails, and I and I like them dark. Uh, this next question I got a young lady want to know at what age should she breed her female or which heat? Uh, basically, I think. From all my understanding and years of breeding and dealing with the dogs, uh, you supposedly uh, wait until they get two years old for maturity, for their body to mature. Uh, at that time, it should be around their third heat. So I think wait at least two years. It won't happen exactly at two years, maybe a little bit over, say two years and a couple months or so. But I honestly think you should... Uh, wait until two years from the female body organs and everything has uh, fully matured for her to carry puppy successful. Now, everybody don't think that. Every counter don't do that. It's just, I mean, people going to make their own decisions on what they want to do for their counter. But uh, as for me, we're going to wait to, uh, we'll wait till our female get two years old, go get her health checks done, make sure everything good before we breed her. That's here at D-Block. We believe in, you know, giving them at least long enough to let their body mature. Uh, the next question we had come in was, uh, do I feed dry kibble only, or do I feed raw, and if so, how much? Uh, lately, I've been adding in a lot more raw, and I noticed a change in my dog's coat and uh, their stool, so as time go on, I will be adding uh, more of a raw diet. I don't just do dry kibble daily, uh, even when I'm not adding raw food in, I usually do rice and probably an egg on their food and probably some ground up chicken. I don't, I never do just straight dry kibble. I don't think dry kibble is enough for them to reach their full potential. So uh, I use a high grade dry kibble and I'm usually adding at least rice, an egg, uh, some ground turkey, ground beef, some of that nature. So. But I am leaning more toward doing uh, more raw. I've been looking at a couple of different menus, a couple of different things I'm going to try coming up to the summer. Uh, I'd rather wait until over in the summertime to uh, start switching that diet over a little bit more over to more of a raw and uh, less kibble. So that's something I'm going to look at probably by the first of the summer. If I do go straight raw or, you know, just remain with kibble and raw. But uh, as of right now, I do uh, dry kibble. With rice, egg, and lean ground turkey or the ground beef. And it, it, it keeps my dogs nice and thick, nice shiny coats. Uh, they love it. I mean, fast as I can get it in the pan, they eat it up. So I don't have any problem with them eating. All right. And this one here was kind of a tricky question, but it, it was uh, sent to me. So... What do I consider a top kennel or a so-called big-time kennel? Uh, 
from my understanding, I think everybody that's breeding consider themselves a top kennel or a big time kennel. First off, I'm not the one to go. I'm not gonna look at somebody and say you're not a big time kennel because maybe you don't have a one or two dogs or you haven't produced any litters yet or you you don't have a certain name in your kennel or I'm not the one to make the judgment on that. Uh, I think everybody that's everybody that's breeding dogs probably think their kennel is the top. I mean, if you don't think your kennel is the top or you don't think it's good, so I mean, why would anybody else think it? So I'm not gonna just throw out certain characteristics to make it sound like you got to be a certain way in order to be considered a top kennel or a good kennel. Uh, as long as you got what you like in your kennel, you producing quality dogs as you think or whatever your customers think. As long as everybody's satisfied on you and you, you, you're a top kennel in your eyes. I, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, this person not a top kennel because he, he haven't been breeding for 10 years or he don't have pedigrees with, you know, top dogs in it. Everybody choose their path different. Uh, I consider myself a top kennel. I ain't even produced a litter yet. So, I mean, it's all about what, what you think of yourself. I'm not going to name like i say certain characteristics that would make you a, a better kennel than anybody else now you got kennels that have been breeding way longer than regular kennels that you know got pedigrees full pedigrees seven generation pedigrees with that all their dogs in it but you know that's you know they got started way before everybody else or but just because you've been breeding for 20 years and this person have been breeding for one i won't say that you know you're a top kennel and this this kennel here is not a top kennel I don't want to get into that of putting nobody else's kennel down. So I think everybody that's breeding consider themselves a top kennel. So I guess that's the way we'll roll with it. And my fifth question I got for this week was, what do I think about kennels uh, starting partnerships? That's basically, in my opinion, up to you. If you find some like-minded people that, you can trust and y'all can share ideas and uh, you think this person or the people you're dealing with are pretty trustworthy. I don't think it's a bad move. Uh, I actually got a couple, you know, partners that mine, we got a little group together. So, and, uh, we, we do pretty good together. So if you, if you can find the right crew to get with it's to me, it's, it's, it's awesome. If you can find somebody to get with and not just try to do everything on your own. Cause no matter what you do, you want to take your ideas and share it with somebody else for like-minded people and hope y'all can come together and, you know, uh, create something real nice between the, between the crew of you. So if you can find somebody and that's what you're looking to do, I, I don't know what area you're in or what you're looking to do, but it's, it's, it's been a plus for me, I can say that. It's been a plus for me finding two guys to kick it with, and we created us a little team, and we – Go back and forth every day talking about the dogs, talking about breedings and what what we want to accomplish in the future. So on my end, it, it, it has worked out real good for me because I like talking, I like networking with people and, you know, like getting different ideas. Or when I come up with an idea, I like to bring it up to somebody that's, that's like-minded like I am or kind of share the same ideas and thoughts that I do about the dogs. And we both kind of have the same vision and we like the same style of dog. So it's worked out pretty good for me. Uh, so I think the partnership thing is, is pretty good if you can get with the right crew of people that's, you know, that want to see everybody elevate, you know, some crews you may get with, they may want to stay at the top and keep you below them or, you know, have different, different ideas of how they want to run their crew, but it's worked out good for me. So I hope if you're looking at getting into a crew with a couple guys or whatever, all y'all got the same intentions and you know, work out good for you. Oh, uh, actually, that's it for this week. Those are the only five questions I had. Uh, kind of late with this one today because we've been, you know, running back and forth, working on the kennels outside, trying to get dogs ready to be shipped off and everything going on with the weather. So uh, that's going to be it for this week. This will be week three of the Q&A. So that's going to wrap it up. And, uh, don't forget, uh, on the 20th, January 20th, we'll be going live on YouTube. On my page here, we'll be starting what's called a Rock Waller Talk blog show that we'll be doing every third Friday of each month. And like I said, uh, if you got questions, please feel free to log in and ask your questions. We're going to have uh, new kennels on, new kennel guests every month. And uh, this first month, we got a 
uh, international breeder that's going to be on to answer questions about importing or anything you want to find out from him as far as, you know, dogs being imported into the States. Any questions you got for, for the kennel? Just, you know, it don't have to be about importing. I just wanted some uh, American kennels on, and then the first show I wanted to bring out an international breeder. So that's the way we're going to do that. Uh, like I said, that's it. Looking forward to the talk show. Uh, thanks for everybody that have sub subscribed to our channel. Thanks for thanks for following us, and we got a lot of good info to put out, man. We're gonna keep working over here, at D Block. Hope everybody uh, have a great great week, and like we always say, man, thank you for checking in with us, man. D Block out.